All right. This were uh, th this this were. Let me try that again. This was <laughs> submitted by Duck Ace, and it is a trivia quiz in the style of Dropouts. Um, actually, but it is all about Magic the Gathering. And with the squad we have here this evening, figured that would be a fun time. Uh, let's begin. Question one. Magic is set in the multiverse, in the multiverse, a series of planes, each with their own themes, and the plane often also gives us the name of the set in which they first appear. Examples of this are Ravnica, City of Guilds, Champions of Kamigawa, Streets of New Capenna, Cons of Tarkir, Strixhaven, School of Mages, Throne of Eldraine, and Ikoria, Lair of Behemoth. Um, actually? Yes? Um, Strixhaven is not the name of the plane. What is the name of the plane? Arcavios. You're correct. There you go. Strixhaven is not Nazi the name staff. of the plane. Strixhaven is the school. Arcavios is the plane. How do I hide chat? Uh, so if that doesn't work, you need to use the scroll pad to select the chat. Uh, uh, it, engineering? It was off. Can oh, I get a bus stop? That might be the problem. Please and thank you. Also, Graham, can I be pedantic? That is the wrong there. <laughs> there's, some, there's some typos. It's so fine. So if you go down and select chat instead of ISO. Huh. Thank you very much. Where? What? So if you if you scroll down with the touchpad, it just needs to be I, uh, directing your commands to chat oh, instead of to ISO. Oh, that's why. Okay, so I do there, and now I hide. Hmm. Nope. Someone got it working on on tech test, I think, and that was the problem, was that you needed to select chat. Well, I'm not going to quit Chrome. <laughs> we could always go find it a blanket. Ship. Oh, that's... Hang on. I figured uh, it out. Aha! Uh -huh. Apple user over here pressing Alt instead of Control. Next question. <laughs> Ravnica is one of the popular places in the game with 10 sets on the plane. Despite this, only three characters have appeared each time we've gone back. The dragon genius Niv Mizzet, the vampire Tasa Karlov, and the demon Rakdos. Um, actually, Rachel. Tasa Karlov isn't a vampire. She's just a lady. <laughs> Tasa is a human being, yeah. not a vampire. Uh-huh. Although, I guess now she is a ghost, now she but, yeah. but at no point and was Tessa a vampire. And flourishing. <laughs> Thriving in her lane. Moisturized. moisturized as transparent. A, as a spirit can be. Ectoplasmed <laughs> all over. Question three. Ye Magic sometimes has to update the rules and the cards have to be errated. Sometimes it's simplifying, like changing when this creature deals damage, you gain that much life to lifelink. When certain abilities are keyworded, like mill or surveil permanently, that will also create the need for cards to be errated. And finally, on cards like animate dead, it's designed to shorten and clarify the wording on the card to help make it easier on the players. Um, actually, yeah, I think when certain abilities are keyworded, they don't have to be errated. They just, like, they get Oracle text updates, but they're not, like, errated in the future. But I also could be reading this card wrong, because this is the part of magic that I don't understand. So I haven't I haven't uh, looked at the answers for this, and I'm actually going to say that when this creature deals damage, you gain that much life, is not lifelink. Lifelink happens at the same time as combat damage. It's That's not... a triggered ability. That's yes, right. Armadillo that is true. Cloak. Yep. That is true. Yeah. Woo! That one I would sad. also argue that in Anime Dead, it was not shortened or no, clarified. No. It was messied and uh, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But right. that didn't sound like an um actually answer. <laughs> Next, we're moving on to our foil question. <laughs> <laughs> On the next slide, you'll see a list of bird species. All of these but one show up on a magic card creature name. Each player will have a single chance to guess which one does not belong. So I guess we'll start with Jordan and go across. So let's see. Or do we? Or do you buzz in? How do we do this? Do we, uh, do we... I don't know. Are you just supposed to each person gets one chance to buzz in? All of these but one show up on a magic card creature name. Each player has a single chance to guess which one doesn't belong. Yeah. So it should still be random. Okay, so I'll let, might, yeah, no. anyone can buzz in. We'll, we'll, I'll go with whoever buzzes in first, but yeah. you only get one shot. All right, let's see it. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Condor, Sparrow, Kingfisher, Hawk, Peacock, Roadrunner, Owl, Duck, Loon, Raven, Thrush, Swan, Eagle, Cormorant, Turkey, Crow, Finch, Crane, Chicken, Osprey, and Goose. Again, we're looking for the one that has not been in a magic card name. We're just jumping in. 
Whenever you want, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna guess turkey. All right, Rachel's guessing turkey. Um, my guess is loon. All right. Um, I'm guessing finch. Matt? I'll guess roadrunner. I was gonna go turkey, but I will go osprey. So I don't have a comprehensive list, but according to this, duck. There are silver border cards of turkey and chicken. Oh. But apparently duck is the only species of bird that does not appear in the name of a card. I demand a duck. Are ducks really birds? I require a duck. I will um, retroactively add a hint to this. This was submitted by Duck Ace. Uh, (laughs) Oh. Yeah, that tracks. What were the other, what, what were your guesses? I said finch. Finch, so I'm pretty sure finch formation was a pretty recent one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was in Bloomberg, was wasn't in Bloomberg. it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Matt, what was yours? Roadrunner. Well, there's a card oh, that's just called yeah. Roadrunner oh. from the, from <laughs> from the Western uh, Thunder Thunder There was a Roadrunner coyote. Yeah. Sort of and you put them together, their art was just one continuous yeah. thing. Uh, Rachel, Swan Song, Gilded Goose. What did you say? Uh, I said Turkey. So it was one of the silver oh, yeah, border ones. So that was... Uh, st- strutting Turkey was one of the host... Uh, er. Augment cards from okay. un, un f- so f- specifically from unsanctioned oh. the, like the like constructed box set. Yeah, though, yeah. I, I am not chapter and verse on unsanctioned. No. To be honest, I guess loon. Loon. Um. There's. Oh God. Hang on. Uh. Sawtooth loon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Terrifying looking thing. It is. Yeah. yeah. What set was that? Uh, that was Original? Dominaria uh, Plane Shift. It's old. Oh, yeah. okay. And Osprey. Osprey. Uh, I, th- I think I know that one. Oh, there's two. Giraper Osprey oh, cool. and Fledgling Osprey from Urza's... Urza's Destiny. There it is. Good. Question four. Uh, planeswalkers are some of the most powerful beings within the story, but it took three of them to seal the Eldrazi on Zendikar. The spirit dragon Ugin, the vampire Soren Markov, and the core geomancer Nahiri combined their powers to create the Hedrons that sealed away the Titans for 6,000 years until they were released by Nyssa. Um, actually, yeah. I'm not certain of this, but weren't they released by Jace? That's not what I have here. Okay. I, I don't know. I'll give you a hint. This is being very particular. Was Ugin... Uh, can I jump back in? Sure. Yeah. Was Ugin not a spirit dragon at that time? No, he was. Were they not sealed away for 6,000 years? No. Is it that Nahiri spelled wrong? No. There's some there's some typos. I'm not going to... I'm not going to rip okay. Duck Ace for that. Uh... But it's close. Nahiri is a lithomancer. Oh, yeah. I was going to guess that. I was like, geomancer looks weird, but I don't I'm know mad. what the answer is. Yeah. Geomancer is somebody who plays cards. geocacher. Yeah. He's yeah. a wizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, question five. The Storm Scale is a ranking system that Mark Rosewater uses to show the likelihood that certain mechanics will show up in a standard set. Other scales are the Ulgrotha Scale for Planes, the Beeble Scale for Creature Types, the Venser Scale for Planeswalkers, and the Gotcha Scale for Silver Bordered Mechanics. Beep. There's no such thing as the Gotcha Scale? That is not what I have here. Great. Look, I worked there, but I don't know anything. <laughs> This one's this one's more direct than the last than the last question. The Beeble scale looks wrong to me, but I'm assuming people who actually play Magic would know if that was made up. I have only heard of the Storm scale. Uh, yeah. I and I know Gotcha's on the Storm scale somewhere. I have. Um, I've heard of the Storm scale, and I've only heard of one other scale here, and it's the one that's wrong. <laughs> Is it the Venser scale? Nope. Uh, uh, yeah, the old growth scale. Process of elimination. Wait, is it the dominant? The old growth scale? scale is wrong. It is not old growth. What is the plane that he thinks we're least likely to ever return to? Wait, was this the? Was it Kamigawa? Was it that old? No. Uh, okay. Least likely to. It's a plane that had a whole set, and we're definitely not going back. Homelands. Old growth is the one from Homelands. Oh. Uh, it's from or, that era. Is it, it just Earth for Arabian Nights? Okay. Good. 
Rabia. Rabia, okay. It's the Rabia scale. Uh, We're not going back to an entire magic plane that's just Earth Arabian Nights. Yeah. <laughs> For a variety of obvious reasons. Yeah. Next question, number six. Bans are just a part of the game and can happen to any format. The record for fastest ban is Mind's Desire in Legacy 2003, with the card being out for less than a week, with concerns about the card being a very powerful storm payoff. Uh, mm, mm. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, uh -huh. Mind's Desire isn't the fastest ban. Is it Lutrian Commander, which was pre-banned? That's correct. It was banned before it even came out. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Rachel's got to know this. I was, like, gotta know this I was like, this sat like, uh, first of all, a week sounds short. We've got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and or it sounds uh, long. Uh, Cranial Ram was banned in Popper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before that's release, true. and Disruptor Flute was banned in Brawl preemptively. Sure. According to there's that. a few things that have been preemptive. Another foil question. Okay. Uh, you, the players, just have to spell a word. <laughs> Each of you will get a single chance. So this one, we will go around the room. Jordan, spell yeah. Tromocratus. T-R-O-M-O-K-R-A-T-I-S. Uh, no, sorry. T. Uh, did I say E in that word? You didn't. Thank God. My brain told me I just did. No, you spelled it right. <laughs> you win. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Question seven. Thank you for saving the rest of us from having to spell. Flavor text that comes from the real world has gotten rarer in more recent years, with the last in a main set being from M14. Examples to cards with real world flavor text are Legends Urborg, with a quote from Edgar Allan Poe, Portal's Wrath of God, quoting King Lear, 8th edition's Giant um, Octopus. Actually, yes. There was real world, world flavor text on one of the cards in the Sheldon Secret Lair. I believe he did. Uh... Oh, yes. He did. That uh, is not what I have here, but that well, is correct, so you will get a point for that. Yes. Not that we are keeping score, but <laughs> yes, correct, good job. Uh, uh, I'll continue. Uh, ninth edition Warrior Oath has a quote from George Washington, and 2020's Happy Little Gathering has a quote from Bob Ross, which it does. That's true. But yes. Um, actually, yes. we don't have a quote from George Washington. Uh... You know what? Cor I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that is that is correct. Ninth edition. The the answer here is that ninth edition's Warrior's Oath has a quote from Calvin Coolidge's collected speeches, oh. <laughs> not George Washington. So yes, there you go. Yeah, good job. Yeah. All right, few more. Question eight. Uh, token creatures aren't something that can be put into your deck, but can be created with various card effects. That doesn't stop them acting like a normal creature. Dying can cause triggers like Blood Artist, allowing you to drain your opponent, and a token dying will cause you to mill from fraying sanity as a card has entered your graveyard. Um, actually... Brett? Tokens don't enter the graveyard? They do. Dang. They do. Uh, but you're close. Um, actually... Yes? Tokens don't count as a card. Tokens are not so cards. you don't trigger Frank Sanity? That is correct. So tokens do go to the graveyard before evaporating into nothing. But if they specify but they're not that it's a cards, card, yes. it doesn't include tokens. Correct. Can I just say that the rest of my playgroup would have a field day doing this, and my brain is exploding. <laughs> 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 yeah, Parker and Mikey would spend their entire lives just on this for the whole day. It's probably why my like thigh is buzzing from my phone. <laughs> I'm just going to yell that. <laughs> Question nine. Uh, Canadian Highlander is a 100-card singleton format using a point system with a small band list. Other cards fall into a points list, with Ancestral Recall being the highest pointed card at 8. The highest pointed creature is Thassa's Oracle at 6. On the artifact side, both Black Lotus and Time Vault are 7. Time Walk is the heaviest pointed sorcery at 6. And the only pointed enchantment is Survival of the Fittest with a lone point. Um, actually, I'm actually. Ooh. You were faster than me. Uh, it is not 100-card limit. You can go above 100. You can. <laughs> that's, that's true. Correct, but the question doesn't say otherwise. It's just it's a 100 okay. card format means you doesn't say you can't go higher. Okay. Um, actually, yes. uh, Underworld Breach is pointed and is an enchantment. Um, actually, Underworld Breach is pointed. Correct. There is one more pointed enchantment, and it's Underworld Breach. The only points I know are the ones in my deck, because I yeah. forget every other one. I, I know that they don't, like, 
the underworld of the uh, breach pointing is like high, right? It's like yeah. five yeah. or something. Which makes sense. <laughs> it's really good. All right. <laughs> Foil question the third. I think this is our last question. On the next slide, you'll be read a scenario and you have to determine how much life oh, Lewis is at. No. Oh, no. <laughs> so let's see it. After being attacked by a monastery swift spear with no prowess triggers, Lewis takes, Luis takes his first turn. Playing an arid mesa, he cracks it and goes to find a blood crypt and makes it come into play untapped. After cycling two street wraiths, he plays a thought seize to take a lightning bolt out of his opponent's hand and then passes the turn. Uh, ten. The answer is ten. Wow. <laughs> you cycle street rate by for two, paying two life. life yeah. All right. I got to the 14 but I didn't remember I wasn't sure if it was two life or three life I, Yeah. one from swift spear, one from the mesa two from shocking the land, four for two street rates and two from the thought seas welcome back chat uh, <laughs> oh wait we got one, one more question it's real life skills <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Can't sleeves. Do this. Sleeves are a great way to protect your magic cards, but you should protect other things in your life too. Basic home or renter insurance. Um, actually, most, yes. Basic home insurance does not protect you from floods. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Though the submitter notes that Canada is currently working on a program like this. At least but, someone. But is. that is absolutely <laughs> the answer. <laughs> Woo! Hey, thanks, Duck Ace. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was awesome. Very fun. I could also do that all day. <laughs> yeah, me too. I played Magic in college so that I would fit in. I haven't really played it since, so I don't know any of that information. 